Hello everybody and welcome to a brand new episode of Draw with Rob with me Rob Bidoff. There I am sitting at my desk, the very desk that I'm recording this video at right now. Now then, just in case you don't know who I am, I'm a children's author and I'm a children's illustrator too. I write and illustrate lots of books for children. You might have seen some of them. Some of them. Have you ever seen this one? This one's called Odd Dog Out. It's all about a sausage dog who doesn't fit in with the other sausage dogs in the place that she lives. So she disappears off to go and find somewhere where she does fit in. And I'm not going to spoil the story. I don't want to tell you what happens, but it's pretty fun, I think. You might like that one. Maybe you've seen my brand new book. It's called Dog Gone. It's all about this chap here whose name is Teddy, which is short for Edward Pugglesworth. And it's all about the day that he loses his human when he's out on a dog walk. Lots and lots and lots of dogs in this book. So if you like dogs, this might be the story for you. Now then, it's a special day today, isn't it? Because this is the very first Saturday edition of Draw with Rob. It's Saturday art club time. <gasps> Super excited about this. So just in case you've never seen any of these videos before, I started doing them right at the beginning of lo lockdown, just before lockdown started in fact, and I started to do them, post them every Tuesday and Thursday to keep you guys entertained while you were stuck at home looking for things to do. But now lockdown's easing up, most of you have gone back to school, so I thought we should maybe switch the day that I put these videos up to a weekend. So I thought, what about a Saturday art club? So here we go the very first Saturday edition of the programme. So, I really hope you're gonna enjoy drawing along with me. Nothing's really changed. We're gonna do exactly the same sort of thing. The only difference being, you know I ask you to send your pictures to me and use this hashtag here, draw with Rob, um, so that I can see them. And then I put together a grid, usually by the end of the day that I post the videos in the first place. I thought I'd give you a little bit longer to get your pictures to me. So from now on, I'm gonna post these videos at 10 o'clock uh, GMT on a Saturday morning, and the grid won't go up until the following Friday, probably around about four o'clock, so sort of after school time on a Friday. So you're gonna have the whole week to do your drawings and get them to me, and then we will select about 100, something like that, at random and put them in the grid. So you've got a bit more of a chance to get your drawing to me in time for the grid. We're also going to be doing another few bits and pieces, but I think I'm going to tell you a bit more about those later on because I don't want to talk for too long at the beginning of your video. You're all itching to draw a picture, aren't you? Right, so what should we draw for our very first Saturday Art Club? How about a robot? Lots of you have been asking me to show you how to draw a robot, so I thought, right, now is the time to do it. So what you're going to need, just in case you haven't seen these videos before, this is what you're going to need, a piece of paper, something to draw with, a pen or a pencil, something like that. Maybe a bit later you might want something to colour with to finish off your drawings nice and colourfully. But you don't need to do that, it's up to you. Um, and that's all you need. And this should take you about maybe half an hour, something like that. So, lots of people, they tell me that they don't think they're very good at drawing. But I say that everybody can draw. It's just a question of knowing the order to do the drawing in. So this is how these videos work. I'm going to do a bit, a little bit of the drawing on my piece of paper here. Then I want you to pause your video and copy exactly what I've done. Then start the video up again. I'll draw a bit more. Pause it. You draw. Then I draw. You draw. I draw. You draw. I draw. You draw. I draw. You draw. And by the end, we're all going to end up with a lovely drawing. Hopefully. I can't wait to see what you do with this one. Right. Should we start then? Okay. So. The very first thing that we need to do is towards the top of your page, we are just going to draw a straightforward rectangle like this. Slightly longer along the horizontal sides than the vertical sides. So around about that sort of size on your piece of paper. Okay, so a lovely, easy start. Right, next we're gonna draw another rectangle. This time it's gonna be the other way up, so sort of not that, not long and thin, but tall and thin, if you see what I mean. So, just like this. Maybe this one's slightly smaller than the first one that we drew. About that, that sort of size in comparison. Does that make sense? I don't seem to be able to get my words quite right today. Do I? I'm sorry about that. Please accept my apologies. 
it's because we've had a bit of time off. <laughs> I've had a week off in between doing my Tuesday and Thursday videos and my Saturday videos. Don't worry, I'll get back in the swing of it soon. Okay, let's draw another shape down here, shall we? So we're gonna draw this rectangle, that rectangle, and then we're gonna draw another, it's sort of a rectangle. I'll tell you what, we're gonna start with two horizontal lines down here. So these ones are about the same width as that first rectangle we drew, but they're gonna be quite close together, like that, okay? And then what I want you to do is join up the ends with a nice curve. So we're effectively drawing a sort of sausage shape, aren't we? Like that. I wonder if you can see this robot starting to take shape. It looks a bit like sort of one big eye, a nose and a mouth, doesn't it? But actually that's not what it is at all. This might give you a bit more of a clue as to what we're doing. What I want you to do is join up these two bottom shapes with some vertical lines. We're gonna do two vertical lines like that, quite close to each other. And then we're gonna do another two over here. Again, quite close to each other, like that. Then we're gonna do two more vertical lines joining shape one and shape two, like that. And then what I want you to do is, actually I'm gonna use my thinner pen for this bit because I need a nice thin line. I want you to draw just some little tiny horizontal lines, sort of stripes all the way up those shapes, like that. Now, what I want you to do next is, we're gonna put your brush quite near your brush. Mine's, I, the reason I say brush is because this is a brush pen. This is made by Kuretaki. Lots of you ask me what kind of pens I use, and I always tell you the same thing. They're mainly made by a Japanese company called Kuretaki. There you go, that's how you spell Kuretaki. And um, these are brush pens, so what that means is they're sort of mini brushes. And um, what, what you can do is when you press hard, you make a thick line, and when you press lightly, you make a thin line. So I really like to draw with them because you can get a nice, you see the way these lines are slightly sort of wobbly? I really like that effect when I'm drawing. So that's why I use brush pens, and that's, that's why occasionally I say brush instead of pen when I'm talking about the pen, you see. So sorry about that. Just thought I should explain for any newcomers. Right then, next thing to do, I want you to put your pen near the top of this rectangle here. And I want you to draw a curved line coming down to about there, so not quite to the bottom of that rectangle. And then I want you to draw another curved line next to it, following the same path, like that. Then on the end of that, I want you to draw a sort of upside down U shape, like that. And then again, we're gonna draw a little line in, and we're going to draw another U shape like that, and then join it up there. I'm sure you can start to see this guy taking shape now. We're going to do exactly the same on the other side, but a mirror image version, okay? Actually, no. Do you know what? Right, I'm going to tell you which bits are which on this drawing now. This, of course, is our robot's head. We have a little neck. We have the body. This is one of our robot's arms with his little mechanical hand. Two legs. And this thing here, well, you'll see what this is going to become because I didn't want to just give my robot just regular robot feet. So I'm going to show you what that's going to become a bit later on. But before I show you that, let's draw his or her other arm here. Now, I was going to draw a perfect mirror image there, but I've changed my mind. I'm going to draw our, re our robot waving to us. So his arm is going to be sort of coming out like that. Again, we're doing the two lines. It's going to be coming over to here, and then I'm going to draw that shape there, but obviously it's facing the other way, sort of pointing upwards this time, because he or she is waving to us. Then why don't we add lots of little lines like we did on the neck and the legs, so that that suggests that these parts of the robot are made out of the same material, whatever that is, some kind of some kind of sort of metal, I think. There we go. All right, so I said I was gonna tell you what I was gonna do with this bit. Now, I didn't wanna make our robot just have regular feet. I thought it might be fun if our robot sort of was on sort of a wheel, sort of a wheel track system, a bit like a tank. You know where you have lots of wheels and you have like a sort of a belt that goes around the wheels with, with little kind of 
nodules on it that help kind of pull your character along. I just thought that would be a fun way for our robot to get around. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to draw lots of little wheels, lots of little circles inside that sausage shape, like that. So we're going to go all the way along. Hopefully I'm going to space it right. Look at that, just about got that right. There we go, perfect fit. Lots of little wheels and inside those circles, let's just draw another little circle. I'm using the very tip of my brush pen so that I get a nice thin line in there. Like that, you see? There we go, that's pretty good. And then remember I said they have, like if you think about tank wheels, you know, like an army tank, they have these little sort of nodules on them. And I guess they're the bits that as the, as the wheels roll along and the belt goes around, these little nodules are the bits that kind of grip onto the ground and pull the tank along. And I figure that it's gonna work exactly the same way for our little robot friend here. So just to add lots of little lines, like that, all the way around. And there we go. There's our robot's means of transportation. Okay, let's give our robot a few features now, shall we? First of all, let's give him some ears or sort of mechanical ears, okay? So what I want you to do is about just below halfway down his head, I want you to draw another little rectangle shape, just sort of stuck to the side of his head, like that. Let's do exactly the same on the other side. There we go. Then I want you to draw another little rectangle shape, but this time just slightly smaller. Again, we'll do it on both sides, mirror images. And then last but not least, we're gonna do a little tiny one there. And that's gonna be the little receivers so our robot can hear. This is fun, I really love drawing robots, it's fun. In a minute I'm gonna let you go off and do your own thing, but first of all I thought we should get the basics in place, okay? So one of the basics is two eyes and a mouth. Let's start with the mouth, okay? Because the mouth is a bit easier to sort of place in the head, because basically it's just sort of at the bottom, but it goes all the way along, up a little bit like that, and then all the way back along. So another kind of rectangle shape that just sits about half a centimetre inside the main head shape there, like that. And then why don't we add some zigzaggy teeth, metallic zigzag teeth for our robot's mouth. And it's quite nice if you can end up both sides either going up to the corner or down to the corner, whichever one, but they should both be the same if you can, but don't worry too much if that doesn't happen. Remember, I always say, if things aren't perfect, that's often quite nice with the drawing. Mistakes, there's no such thing as mistakes. See that, look, smudged it with my left hand, didn't I? I'm gonna leave it there, I don't mind that. I like it when there's a bit of smudging and a bit of mess going on. It makes it look a bit more sort of artistic, a bit more genuine. Oh, hello, Ringo. Ringo's just been asleep behind me. He's just got up. He's having a little stretch, aren't you, Ringo? You're going to say hello to everybody? No? Oh, no. He's just closed his eyes and gone back to sleep. Sorry about that. I thought he might say hello, but he didn't. Maybe later. <laughs> right, let's add a couple of eyes to our robot, shall we? Right, I want you to draw a circle sort of just above the left-hand end of our mouth. And that circle is pretty much exactly halfway down the head. Let's do exactly the same at the other end. Nice small circles, like that. Two little eyes. Look, suddenly our robot's coming to life. But instead of doing a little pupil in our robot, to make them look a bit more mechanical, I thought it might be nice if we just add some more of those sort of stripes. A bit like, if any of you ever seen the Star Wars films, I'm sure a lot of you have. C-3PO's eyes are a bit like this. So there we go, a little nod to C-3PO in Star Wars. Okay, now, I don't think I'm gonna show you anything else to do with your robot because the fun bit is adding 
all the little buttons and circuits and sliders and little screens and things on our robot's body, maybe even some on our robot's head. And I think there's no, basically there's no rules to this. There are, I'm gonna, I will do some here. So if you want to watch what I do, you can, and you can either copy exactly what I do, or you can take some of the elements that I draw and you can put them wherever you would like on your robot but I think it'd be nice if you sort of got a bit creative at this point and you can also put little aerials or little bit little mini satellite dishes that kind of thing on top of his or her head it's totally up to you but I don't want to be too prescriptive with what you do here so I think you should go off and do your own thing I'm going to do my own thing now I'm probably going to go into super speed mode a bit and then I will stop before we get onto the coloring part of things and have a little chat again there okay so I'm going to go into super speed mode and do my robot details. So I'll see you back here in about 10 or 20 seconds, something like that. So in the meantime, you get busy with your own details and I'll see you soon. Okay, three, two, one, go. Okay, so there is my robot complete with all his little details. So I've done lots of little buttons and switches, some sort of slidey things, a few little sort of panels with rivets. So if you just do sort of little dots around the edge of sort of rectangle shape, it looks like little sort of panels are being riveted to the robot's body. And look, I've even done one that looks a bit like a nose. Then I've added some sort of receivers here and some aerials and various, various things here. Actually, let's add a few little sort of lines coming off this one as if it's sort of beaming out some kind of robotic signal like that maybe he's a remote controlled robot i don't know um i've given mine a name robbot of course robbot that's what this guy's called i've added a few little sort of leads and wires and things like that coming out the side some buttons on the side so that sort of thing now then i think it's time we colored in our robots now you know the rules here. The rules are, there ain't no rules. You can do anything you like with the colors, especially on a robot. You could, I guess if you were having a robot built, you could choose exactly what color that robot was. So just use your favorite colors and go crazy. The more, the more colorful, the better, that's what I say. So I'm gonna go back to super speed mode while I color mine in, and I will see you back here in about 30 seconds. You ready? Three, two, one, let's go. And so there is my finished coloured in robot. There we go, what do you think? I've gone for mainly red. Some of you might know my favourite football team is Arsenal, so therefore my favourite colour is red, pretty much. So I thought I'd go for mainly red, but the fun thing about this drawing is there's so many little details everywhere that you can use lots and lots of different colours, or lots and lots of different shades of grey if you're not using colours, to colour in all these little details. So look, I've got a little screen down there. I think I forgot to mention that. I'm going to make that a little bit greener. There we go, a little kind of video screen showing some kind of... I don't know what it is, some kind of wave pattern or something. This robot's obviously analyzing something as he trundles around on his little wheels, going from place to place, doing his little tasks. But yeah, you can see I've colored in all these little buttons, different colors, so you can get a real nice variety of bits and pieces. So it's a really nice drawing to do this because you can be really super creative and do whatever you like. You can even, if you like, you can draw more robots. You can change the shapes of their heads. You can have one with a triangular head or a circular head. Maybe some of them have got, you know, more than two arms or they're just a totally different shape altogether. If you think about Star Wars, we mentioned Star Wars earlier on, they have all sorts of different robot shapes, don't they? R2-D2 sort of got a curved top and there's ones which are sort of just like boxes with legs so I think you can just go crazy once you have all these sort of building blocks these little bits and pieces you can go crazy and make up all sorts of different robots and do you know what I would really really love to see them all now I mentioned earlier what you need to do once you've finished your drawing you need to get your grown-up or somebody who's got a camera phone or something like that to take a picture of your drawing and then if you post it on social media using this hashtag draw with Rob that way I'll get to see it and you'll have a chance of your drawing making the grid, oh, the grid of pictures, which you're going to have a few days 
uh, to get that to me because we're not going to post it till Friday. Now, I know a lots of you out there do these drawings at school. Some of your teachers use these videos at school in the classroom, so like for your art class or just for a little break in between doing your maths or whatever else it, whatever else it is you're doing. Lots of you watch these videos. So how about this? I am going to introduce a new feature and it is called the Draw with Rob class of the week. So what I want you to do teachers is take a photo of your children holding up their drawings or if you don't feel comfortable taking pictures of your of your actual pupils just put all the drawings together on the wall or on the floor or something like that and take a picture of all your classes drawings of these robots and then send them to me using the hashtag draw with Rob and maybe using the hashtag class of the week too and then I will get to see all those drawings and I'll pick one as my favorite class of the week drawing and we'll put that up online too oh Ringo making a funny noise. I think he's having a dream. Remember I said he was fast asleep. He's having a bit of a dream. Maybe he's dreaming that he's chasing some squirrels or something. I don't know, but making lots of funny noises. Sorry about that. So yes, class of the week. I wonder who's going to be the very first class of the week. So don't forget to, to send me all of your pictures because I really can't wait to see them. Listen, I hope you've had a good time drawing this robot with me today. I'm going to be back in another week's time with another Draw with Rob video. In the meantime, I want you all to keep on drawing, take care of yourselves, and I'm going to see you again very soon. Goodbye, everybody. expect to see me that soon did you <laughs> i hope you really enjoyed that video that you've just watched i can't wait to see the drawings that you've done don't forget to share them using the draw with rob hashtag i just wanted to pop up here and remind you that the draw with rob activity book is out now if you would like to grab yourself a copy you can get it from wherever you get books from and it's full of really cool things for you to do coloring pages lots of the draw alongs of your favorite characters that we've done on these videos here and there's a little frame for you to draw your pictures in. Perforated edge so you can tear the picture out easily and stick it up on the wall. But there's loads of really cool things for you to do. As I said, colouring pages, um, little thing. I've started drawings off and you've got to finish them, that kind of thing. And then right at the end, if you go through the book and you really enjoy yourself, look, there's even your very own certificate to stick up on your wall to say that you are officially an ace artist. So there you go. That book is available now. I'll stick a link somewhere in the post or on the YouTube page for you if you are interested in buying it. In the meantime, this time I really am going. I'll see you very soon for another Draw With Rob video. Take care.